Hey y'all, welcome to Peyton Energetics. I'm Peyton. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about what it actually looks like to live in a fifth dimensional society. So as you all know, I am a Pleiadian channel and I work with a guide team of mostly Pleiadian and Syrian guides. And the guides have been talking to us a lot lately about how important it is for humans to start imagining the new earth that we want to create, to start imagining the type of society we want to live in in order to help us imagine what it will be like to live in higher dimensional societies, my guides have been sharing some of the traits, some of the characteristics that are often seen in more advanced civilizations so that we here on earth can start to play with those in our imagination, start to imagine what it would actually be like if our society was structured like that. And of course, as we do that, especially as light workers and star seeds, what happens is we start to create that for our entire collective. So today I'm going to share what some of the guides have described as some of the more common features of fifth dimensional and higher civilizations. So when we are talking about higher dimensional societies, the guides say that there are certain characteristics that most advanced civilizations share or that moved through these at various stages of their evolution. So these are some of the things that we can start to play with in our imagination and as we do that as humans, we start to create that on earth. So one of the first things that the guides mention as a common characteristic in many fifth dimensional and higher civilizations is that there is no monetary system. So the reason for this is that everything belongs to everyone. So when you live in a civilization like this, anything you need is provided to you. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to trade anything. Everything is freely given. So of course, on planet Earth, we have the opposite of that. And our financial system and money on our planet has been created as a way to enslave the human population because that keeps the resources in the hands of a few and makes everyone else have to kind of scrape and fight for it. So as we move into a more evolved, more advanced society, we will be doing away with this. So one thing that the guides have said that many star races find completely baffling about humans is that we have been conned into thinking we have to pay to live on our planet. So some of the other star races that are observing Earth and so many are watching us right now think that it's really confusing that humans have bought in to the idea that all of our resources are controlled by a few. They're like, why would you even believe that, much less go along with that? So that is such a foreign concept to many of our star family. And so one of the things that we will be looking forward to as we move into fifth dimensional living and more advanced collective society is we'll be doing away with financial enslavement. And as the guides like to say, all forms of money and economy are forms of enslavement because in a higher consciousness, you know that you are an infinite being. You can create anything you want, anything you need. So we will be moving out of this illusion of a monetary system. And so that sounds really good to me. Now, along the same lines, something else that you will notice in many of the more advanced star races, people don't work. There aren't jobs. Because again, the whole concept of jobs as we have them here on earth, again, go back to the idea of financial enslavement. So in the more advanced societies, a lot of times the guides say what happens is people do what they love. So whatever is your passion, whatever is your heart's desire, you do that and you contribute or you donate the results of that to your society, to your planet, your collective. So if you are an artist, 
you paint or you draw or you create music and then you give the results of that to whoever wants it. So everything is about creation. Everything is about following your passion, but there are no jobs. There is no doing something that you hate to do or don't want to do in order to survive. That is a very lower dimensional construct. That is a 3D construct that we have created to torture ourselves here on earth. But as we move into advanced societies, we will be doing away with that. It will all be about following your passion and freely sharing that with whoever is interested. Now, something else that is very common in advanced societies is the concept of service to others. So again, this is very different from how we have all been programmed on earth, where everything is about learning and figuring out how to survive ourselves. So we're very focused on service to ourselves. But as we expand in our consciousness, we will shift into a focus on service to others, service to the whole. So as the guides say, the focus in advanced societies is all about how can you be of service to your collective? So that will become our focus instead of we are very primed as humans to be very survival focused. We have had to fight to survive. And that all goes away as we move into unity consciousness, into higher consciousness, because we know we are always infinitely provided for. So as we start to move into fifth dimensional society, our focus will then shift from having to survive, having to help our family survive, to instead helping our entire collective thrive and expand. Another thing that is very interesting about many fifth dimensional societies is that there is no government, there are no rules, and there are no laws. And so when the guides explain that, they understand that this can be somewhat confusing to humans because of course we are caked with layers and layers of external sources of control. But according to the guides, as we expand our consciousness and move into unity consciousness, we would never do things that would harm or infringe on another. So there is no need for rules and laws because you don't have people who are cheating and lying and stealing because you don't need to do that. Everything is provided to you. So when you know that you are infinitely and abundantly provided for, there's no need for any of the things that our laws are set up to protect us from. So if you don't have a crime, if you don't have stealing, if you don't have people trying to harm and take advantage of each other, because you would never do that as part of unity consciousness, it makes no sense. You have everything that you need. You no longer need to have layers and layers of rules and laws, because as unity consciousness, you know that you are all connected you know that when one person thrives, the entire collective thrives. So you would never do anything to harm that. You would never do anything to harm another because you know you're just harming yourself in the process. So as we move into higher dimensional society, the guides say we will be moving away from the whole idea of government, rules, laws, really any form of external authority. Because as we move up the consciousness scale, we know that we are absolutely free and absolutely sovereign. So we don't really abide by any form of external rules because as we raise our consciousness, we know we are creating it all. Now, along the same lines with this transitioning out of the need for governments and laws and rules is there's a lot more personal freedom in higher societies, higher civilizations. And one of the ways that this manifests is that people can do whatever they want, as long as they don't harm or interfere with anyone else. And that includes the planet, and that includes the animals on the planet. So one of the characteristics of fifth dimensional society, fifth dimensional civilizations, is that people can do pretty much whatever they want, as long as they don't harm or interfere with anyone else. So you know that you're just harming your collective if you are to do something like that. And so 
It just doesn't make sense to do it. So we move into much greater personal freedom and much greater personal sovereignty as we move up the dimensional scale. Now, we talked a moment ago about how many higher dimensional civilizations don't have what we think of as formal systems of government or rules or laws. And so the question may come up then, well, how do how do collectives or societies function if they don't have these ways to resolve disputes? Because of course, our rules and laws are one of the ways we resolve disputes in our collective. So how does it work then in these higher dimensional societies where there is no government or no rules or no laws? How do you resolve disputes? Because even among the best intentioned people, there are going to be differences of opinion. So how do these societies resolve disputes? Well, according to the guides, it's very common, and this is something that is seen in the fifth dimensional Pleiadian civilizations, some of them, and also some of the fifth dimensional Syrian civilizations, is that there is often a structure of what you might think of as councils. And sometimes these are called pods in Sirius. And the way these function is as advisory councils. So councils that meet to resolve any disputes, any questions that need to be resolved amongst the collective are run through a hierarchy or a system of councils. And these councils are essentially non-binding. So they are not limiting the way our government bodies are here on earth, but they're there to resolve disputes, to resolve differences, to resolve issues and problems that come up in any collective. And what happens then is the guides say, common sense prevails and the needs of the whole prevail. So basically when conflicts come up in evolved civilizations that don't have the need anymore for our rigid 3D ideas of government rules and laws, they have non-binding organizations that solve any disputes that come up. And if a dispute cannot be resolved at say a neighborhood level, then it would go to the council or the organization at the next level up. Maybe it goes then to the state level and you continue to go up the chain. And there are several different levels of organizational bodies that help ensure collective progress and harmony, but they're not what we think of as being rigid government structures. For the most part, the guides say these are non-binding and it's going to be what is best for the community that is the solution that these bodies are looking for, what is best for all. And a lot of times these governing bodies, these councils are freely open to anyone who wants to participate. So if you want to participate on it, you are welcome to. And if you don't have an interest in it, then they don't really affect you. And so this is kind of how our concept of government is going to be evolving and transforming as we evolve as a collective civilization. Now, something else that is different about more evolved civilizations and something that we could really benefit from implementing here on earth is that in fifth dimensional civilizations, many of them, and again, when I share these characteristics, it is not to say that every advanced civilization has these. Um, these are some of the trends that many civilizations go through according to the Pleiadians. But again, there is no one size fits all. So you may have guides who may be describing their society and it looks nothing like this. So as with everything, everything is perspective. The Pleiadians are just giving us some signs, some ways that we can start thinking about evolving our human collective by sharing some of the characteristics that you will see in a lot of advanced civilizations. Now, one of the things that you will also notice in many advanced civilizations is that all information is freely available to everyone. And what this means is that all of the information that anyone in the collective has is freely available to every other person. So unlike Earth, where everything is so secretive, so hidden from people, so kept in the hands of a few, the exact opposite happens as we start to move into higher consciousness. 
It is in the collective benefit for everyone to have access to all information. And so with the way the guides explain this is they say, this creates an environment of creative thinking. When everyone has access to anything they want to know, you have access essentially to the archives of your entire planet. And what this encourages is everyone to review the information, whatever they are interested in, add to it, or come up with new ways of doing things. So with total transparency comes freedom of thought and increased creativity that benefits everyone. So this is one of those things that hopefully we as the awakened community will start to imagine so that we start to bring this transparency to earth. Because again, this secrecy has really backfired on us here on earth. It has led to the control of information by a few and by the manipulation of that information. But when your society is completely transparent, that can't happen. So this is one of those things that personally, because my guides always encourage me to be imagining the new earth, because they say, as you do that, you create it. And you also download that blueprint into the entire human collective. This is one of those things that I always play with. Trying to imagine total transparency in our society. Because again, look how much damage it has done from the secrecy and the deception that has really pervaded planet Earth. And just imagine what would happen if all information was freely available to everyone. So the guides always say they want to prepare us because as we move into being fifth dimensional beings, there's total transparency. There is no hiding anything. And one of the reasons for that is because we become telepathic. And when you are a telepathic society, there's no hiding anything. So this is something that we are moving into. And the more we start to imagine that and pull that in, the more we will start to bring that transparency to earth. And what that does is gives everyone freedom of creativity. Everyone has access to whatever they need to know, and it can't be manipulated or controlled. And that is where we have really had this backfire on us here in the third dimensional earth. Now, something else that the guides have mentioned is that in advanced societies, in advanced civilizations, they are vegan. So this is something that, of course, is a very hot button topic here on Earth. There is a lot of opinions about it. There is a lot of judgment around it on all sides of the issue. But the guys just wanted us to know that as we join our galactic family, eating meat is frowned upon because all of our animal species have higher dimensional versions of themselves. And many of what we consider to be our animal species have star races that are higher dimensional versions of that animal. And that those higher dimensional versions of what we consider to be that animal are often star beings and star races that are vastly more evolved than humans. So we have feline races that are some of the most advanced in the galaxy. We, of course, have reptile races that are amongst the highest dimensional and highest density beings in our galaxy. We have very highly evolved insectoid beings. We have the mantis beings. So our human tendency to look at animals as being second class citizens is something that the guides say does not fly in the galactic community. So this is something for us to just start examining on a personal level. And it's not something we have to go out and implement immediately, but the guides wanted to prepare us that as we start wanting to join the galactic family, we can't be eating other people. And so as they like to say, if you are eating animals, you are eating other people. So take that or leave that. I know that's something that's going to be very triggering for some people. And the guides are not telling us we have to make any particular changes right now, 
but they want us to know that this is coming as we evolve, um, that our respect for animals has to also evolve. Because again, many of the beings that we will be interacting with are animal beings. And they are very oftentimes much more evolved than we are, much more highly conscious than we are, and much more advanced than we are. So a little bit of a perspective shift has to happen for the humans, according to the guides. So as always, just take that with a grain of salt. It's just something that the guides are giving us a heads up on that it would be beneficial for us to re-examine our beliefs and opinions about the animals that we share our planets with. Because again, as we move into more multidimensional society, our behavior and our patterns are going to have to shift. And they say this is one of those areas where most benevolent races do not eat meat or any animal product. So again, no judgment, just be wherever you are in that process. You know, not all of us have gotten to the point of being able to be vegan. There is no judgment implied in wherever you are personally, whatever your thoughts are on that is completely valid. Just sharing again, the guides are starting to kind of pull us toward some of the things that will be expected of us as we want to have a seat at the galactic table. So this is one of them is a re-examination of our policy on how we treat our animal friends. Something else that the guides have told us that is a little different from how we operate here on earth is that in the higher dimensions, there is no religion. And they say that is because once you are back in unity consciousness, you know that you are divine. So they say that religion is a way that humans control each other. So again, that may be something that's very triggering from you for you. Take that or leave it however it resonates. But the guides say we will be moving away from the need to have organized religions because as we ascend, we will know that we are all one consciousness and there just isn't a need for it. It's like having another source of external authority. You don't need someone telling you what to do because you know you are the divine creator of your life. So we'll be moving away from the concept of organized religions as we know them here on earth. And finally, one other thing that the guides say that we will start to take advantage of as we develop into a more evolved fifth dimensional society is that everything that we do and all of our technologies will be things that are only available if they are benevolent, if they are expansive, and if they are freely available to all. So as we evolve, we will no longer have the technologies and the products that we have on earth that are so destructive to our environment, that are so polluting. Uh, we will no longer have anything that is harmful to our human bodies because we know we have the expanded consciousness to know that it is kind of crazy to do things that poison yourself. So as we raise our consciousness, we will no longer do things as a society that harm ourselves. So some of the things that we do and allow here on earth are kind of mind boggling to members of the higher dimensions because why in the world would a species have technologies that poison them, that are detrimental to their physical bodies? Why would they pollute their environment? Why would they destroy their environment? All of these are things that from the perspective of unity consciousness, a more highly evolved collective just wouldn't do. It makes no sense. And so as we start to let that sink into our brains, it helps us see that a lot of things we are doing on planet earth don't make sense. Why would we be doing this to ourselves if it is not good for us? So as we move into fifth dimensional society, we start to only have things, whether that is a technology, whether that is a product, whether that is a way of doing things that are benevolent, that doesn't harm the human population, that doesn't harm the animal population, and that doesn't harm the planet. That becomes the baseline working rule. You just wouldn't do that as part of unity consciousness, because we realize as we expand our consciousness that we are all one, that when one of us thrives, we all thrive. And that when we hurt one of ourselves, we hurt the whole collective. So as we move into fifth dimensional society, we are going to be shifting along these lines and starting to 
work from an entirely new level, a level of benefit to all, because we realize as we move into unity consciousness, we are all one consciousness. So as a light worker, as a star seed, if you start to play with these ideas, just thinking about what would that look like if earth was like that and starting to imagine that we start to create that for our earth collective. And that's what we are here to do as light workers and star seeds is bring that new earth into reality. So again, not all of these characteristics necessarily exist in every single civilization. Some civilizations may have skipped over some or all of these. The guides are just giving us some of the trends, some of the common things you will see in more advanced civilizations to give us something to start imagining. Because as we imagine, we start to create that here on earth. And for me, these all seem like improvements to what we have going on now. So I hope this helps you start to envision and imagine the new earth. And let me know in the comments, what else would you add to this list? Drop that in the comment box below. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button and the like button if you haven't done that yet. I'll see you soon. Bye.